Page pass for a Friday, May the 13th, and I guess we shouldn't be scared today at all, but they say, you know, sometimes the Friday the 13th is one of those days that could scare us, I guess, depending on who you talk to. Uh, I'm not scared here because it is the backstage pass, and we are presented by our good friends over at uh, Bangtail Whiskey. Check them out, bangtail.com, or check out the Easy Liquor app, and you can get that sent directly to your door. Also, our friends at MitchMax.com, and of course, our good friends at Hank Jr. Productions. We're live on the Backstage Pass YouTube channel. And, of course, live at the sportsguyspodcast.com. And, yeah, I had a little rant and raven last night with the NFL schedule with some of my buddies and did some comments online this morning. So um, I've actually picked my game on the schedule. October 9th, State Farm Stadium, uh, Philadelphia Eagles at the Arizona Cardinals. So looking forward to that and seeing my good friend Christy down there, too. It was like they were selling tickets last night so fast. It was crazy how much people are passionate and just love uh, football. Well, I tell you what, here on a Friday, it's a TGIF version. Always good heading into the weekend. I'm going to go get some sunshine this weekend and enjoy the beach. And I'm going to do it with a little bit of Cowboy Down here as Clay Airy joins us here on the backstage pass for this uh, Friday show. Brother, what's going on? Head Sydney says Nashville. Man, I've just been busy at work with uh, writing and recording, uh, working on a new album. So uh, that's, that's what you guys do. That's why you're <laughs> musicians, no doubt. Hey, let's uh, talk about that since I guess we last talked. Uh, since Nashville, let's start here. Key West Songwriters Festival. Give me the whole lowdown. How exciting that was. Key West was uh, a thrill, and uh, I loved I loved being there. The environment just so relaxing. It's it's like a party town, but it's uh, more relaxing, as you say. Um, you don't have to worry about your worries are free since you're down on the beach. <laughs> yeah. And um, no, it was a good time. And uh, I being in Key West, I ended up getting like 20,000 views on my colorblind video. Just be, just being down there and meeting people and shaking hands every chance I got. And, uh, no, I met a lot of good people, made a lot of good connections and sang a lot of good country music. <laughs> well, you've done that, man. And I love your style, man, because honestly, you, you speak from the heart, man. The lyrics really talk about it. And several of the songs we're going to cover today, and you're going to perform a couple for us here on the broadcast. But just talk about your sound, your music, and – I didn't get a chance to ask you when we were there because I know CRS was crazy and all the stuff that was going on. And in bar lines, you were like neck and neck with people and elbow to elbow with everybody. So when you get a chance to dive into it as much, but heavily influenced, it's got in your music, or at least I get the sense of it has the 90s feel. So I, I, get, I, get, I get the the just, there's a little 90s feel, maybe early 2000s in there. Get guaranteed for sure. That's I mean, that's when I was born was <laughs> the 90s. I'm a, I'm a youngin, I guess. But um, no, uh, Garth, Garth Brooks was a big in inspiration in my music and uh, George Strait. So when my dad uh, was younger, uh, his mom, my grandma that I never got to meet, Bonnie, uh, she would play him George Strait all the time, just jam George Strait in his head. And uh, he ended up, I never got to meet her because she passed away early, but mm -hmm. um, he uh, started listening to rock music all the time. And <clears throat> when I came along into his life, uh, he jammed George Strait in my ears all the mm -hmm. time. I would be listening to George Strait, Brad Paisley, Garth Brooks, Alan Jackson. And my sister would be on the side of like early 2000s, like rock, hip hop, R&B kind of thing. But uh, I got a little mixture of everything. But I uh, in my blood and in my in my bones was country music. So that's what that's what I was listening to. <laughs> well, it's there. You can hear it. Let's let's go back a little bit. Uh, like I said, pre uh, pandemic there and one that we we're talking about a little bit before the show that for at least for me um, I stuck with it was just like playing it over and over again I was like walking at work today like just humming it humming it having a good time and feeling good uh, Cowboy Down you were talking about the special writer uh, who was on that kind of remind people who wrote that then you put your own spin on it which was a hell of a job out there it's across the platforms it was 19 I guess before we got into the the whole pandemic thing but that's a special song for you guys right uh, that was a pretty good song for us. Uh, Cowboy Down was written by Tommy Barnes. Um, I never got to play it out that much. Um, I would say that uh, singing it wise, it's a very hard song to sing. Mm -hmm. It's not easy at all. And um, I just never got the chance to really express that song too much in, in my own experience. But it's a, it's a dang good song. I know that. Well, you put your spin on it too as well. And then I tell you what, uh, last December you guys had and you, and another great uh, tune out there too, which you guys were able to put your spin on. Uh, let's let's kind of dive in a little bit to um, Cowboy Christmas and talk about that one a little bit too, because always special to put out holiday music. And I get, because every December my inbox goes off, boom, 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 boom. And it's like someone wanting to come on to promote a new Christmas album or EP or Christmas song. And I've got like 
five days to put like five people in before I go on vacation. And I love doing it, which is I can't get to everybody. But this one, this one is something we're, I think we're going to have another show to, to talk about this one. I'm going to talk about it today. But I mean, if you're, if you're looking at more Christmas music, then I got to book you in December. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm always looking for Christmas stuff, man. I'm, uh, I'm excited about that too, because there's some uh, future things happening for me down in Texas. Um, that I might be going on a Christmas tour, uh, might be doing that with uh, some special artists. <clears throat> but um, no, that song, uh, Cowboy Christmas, was originally supposed to be for Garth Brooks, and Garth Brooks was going to cut it, but it didn't make the mm -hmm. end of the album. And it was written by Tony Stampley and Bonnie Swayze, and um, it was a, it was a great song, uh, period. It was, it was like a Garth Brooks, old 90s mm -hmm. Garth Brooks yep. song, and that's what I tried to, to make it as. So. And I love the title of this one, too, because we're going to dive into it. I'm just going song after song right now, too, as well. Um, Tell Your Sister I'm Single. <laughs> it came out in uh, 2020, I guess, the pandemic side of things. Um, yeah, that's an that's interesting title. Uh, is that one you wrote, or is that one you acquired? Uh, that's one I acquired, too. Um, a, okay. a big songwriter, uh, Amanda Williams, was on that. And uh, that song was the one of the funnest ones that I had. In, in that era in 2020 it was a rough year mm -hmm. and i had some rough things going on uh, not the personal side but with music but um i uh, did some big things with that song on the radio and then it uh, fell off the radio but that song everybody loved and uh sometime soon in the near future i might rethink about recutting that song and putting a different <laughs> spin on it but um no that song is that song is great um all the young people love it, mm -hmm. even though actually the older people love it too. But I always think like, uh, is, is, are the women going to get mad at the song or are they not? Because a, wo a woman wrote it too. So I was, I, I never know. So. Well, I'll tell you, I'm going to have you, uh, let's, let's have a little fun here on the uh, backstage pass. It's TGI version. Hell, we may even do three songs today. I'm feeling so good today in the weekend, just around the corner, man, you can't beat when I say I'm going to the beach. That's just, you're getting a bunch of rays in the water. There's nothing like it man, out there. I see my kid running around playing the sand. Just, just, let me get in your let me get in your suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, what's funny is I don't feel like packing the suitcase tonight, but I have to because you got to get everything ready when it comes to, to that kind of thing. Of course, I guess the, the, the kid's more complicated than I am. Just throw a couple of towels and a, a pair of shorts in there, and that's kind of the swimsuit now for these days. I don't even you know people say that, man. They go to like academy. That's a funny story. And I don't mean to get off topic, but they 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 go to academy. And they're like, well, you need a pair of Crocs, you need a pair of swim shoes, and you've got to get actually a swimsuit. I'm like. Look, man, when you turn 40 like I have and you're in your 40s, you, you just grab a pair of shorts. And like I said, just your your workout shorts or athletic shorts and go swimming, right? I mean, that's that's the beach. Right. You got to. <laughs> so you're going to go spend the extra money. Hell, the gas getting down there right now with the way gas prices are is, is insane, you know, when it comes that's, to That's me. I just got to have a beer in my hand, though. Well, there you go. I'm gonna stop and get my my well, I'll say Michelob Ultra, but there's a cheap plug for them too. So no, it's good. I love Ultra, and uh, like I said, that's that's my favorite beer out there. 95 calories. Yeah, you got a little I'm right there with you. Right there with me. Okay, we'll do Ultra. That's what I love. <laughs> get some yeah. of those. Let's uh, let's play some music here. Of course, uh, like I said, clayary.com, and of course across all socials out there, uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter, Instagram. Go ahead and give him a like, and definitely. Uh, you guys can uh, check out some really awesome music that we're talking about today. And, of course, we're going to get into songwriting and a whole bunch more of the new projects that are coming out here in 2022. So if you got that guitar, brother, let's grab it and let's let's play something. Let's do it. Okay. I'll play you some, uh, I'll play you some songs off the EP that's coming out soon, and then I'll play you a, a special song of mine that I uh, might record after the EP as a single. Um, this first song... That's going to be on the EP. Uh, the EP should be coming out either in June or July. I'll know soon. Mm -hmm. um, but this first song is about um, just never wanting to leave home. But when your buddies call up, you don't think twice. <laughs> yeah. So um, you, you want to be at home, buddy, but you don't at the same time. So it's That's called true. Home Buddy. Here we go. Never was a kind I liked to go out till my buddies started calling my phone. They said they were headed out of town. You ain't got to stay home. The night is young, beer's cold. Neon waiting, green light, let's go. I'll be the first one to fire it up. 
Give myself a reason and get messed up in the summertime. Friday night, county line, friends of mine. I ain't got to sit home feeling sorry. I don't want to be a homebody. Monday morning, that alarm clock screams. I'll be crying it out like I do every week. Ain't got the time to go out every night when the buddies call. I want to think twice. Cause I'll be the first one to fire it up. Give myself a reason to get messed up in the summertime. Friday night, county line, friends of mine. I ain't got to sit home feeling sorry. I don't want to be a homebody, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be a homebody. Life's too short to spend it all alone. So what's the use of sitting at home? Cause I'll be the first one to fire it up Give myself a reason and get messed up In the summertime, Friday night, county line, friends of mine I ain't gotta sit home feel sorry I don't wanna be a homebody I don't want to be a homebody, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be a homebody. That's what I love about country music, man. Three chords in the truth. If that isn't three, three chords, I love it. And, of course, the spin he puts on his music, man. We got to meet in Nashville at CRS 2022 up there in Nashville, Tennessee. And, of course, headed back there for 2023 coming up March 13th to 15th of next year. Uh, we met this past year at Bar Lines. I mean, what a fantastic sound. I loved meeting so many great people up there, man. And you're right there in that category of just great up-and-coming country music artists out there that keep it uh, authentic. And it's songs like that, brother, that uh, <clears throat> real me. Just I had to say one word, and it was like, yes, yes, yes. Like Daniel <laughs> Bryan does in WWE or what is I it now, AEW, that. whatever he's in now. So I anyway, it was just yes, 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 yes. Uh, like I said, man, love the sound and the songs like that. And we'll come back, talk about the EP, of course, uh, coming up this summer, some new songs. I want to talk about songwriting and dive into that a little bit here. It is the uh, Backstage Pass. We're live on the Backstage Pass YouTube channel. Go subscribe there. Some amazing artists all the time. We get to interview here on the show coming up next week. Uh, Colby Cooper and, of course, Atlanta Springsteen are going to drop by here on the calendar. Uh, Drew Cooper coming on next week. Just some amazing talent that we've uh, put together for you. And also, we're still trying to track her down, Hunter Girl from American Idol. Uh, for this season, they're in the top five coming up this weekend, so they'll need your votes out there uh, to get her to the finale, which is, of course, uh, next week. We'll find out who wins that competition. I'm uh, going to pay some bills here. Uh, Bangtail Whiskey and Mitch Max, our friends over there. More with uh, Clay Airy here on the Backstage Pass coming up. Uh, a lot more to talk about. And stick around. Rapid Fire's coming up, too. Here's a word from Bangtail. Hang tight. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune into the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And back here with Clay Airy on the program. Of course, check him out, clayairy.com, A-E-R-Y.com. Make sure you do guys do that. And, of course, a lot of cool projects coming up over the next few months from him, a new EP uh, due out this summer. We're about to dive into that, of course. Uh, presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey, MitchMax.com, and our good friends at Hank Jr. Productions. Be sure to check out our sponsors. We're live on the YouTube channel, The Backstage Pass, and, of course, live at the Sports Guys Podcast.com. So let's talk about that. You mentioned, kind of hinted a little bit before uh, you performed there, Y'all don't yet have a drop date, but this is getting exciting for you because a lot of these songs are coming to life, and this is a cool body of work coming out the CP, right? Oh, it is for sure. Uh, it's it's my songs. Um, I wrote them with <clears throat> a lot of good people. There's one song on there that uh, there's a lady named Mar Mary Francis. Um, she's a good friend of ours, and uh, the other writer on the song uh, passed away, and uh, it's a love song. And the first time I heard it, I got chills in my arms. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just like, I just listened to it too many times. And I, I was like, I, I have to cut it because she was like, Clay, if you cut this song, it's going to go big. And I was like, well, and a lot of people were wanting the song, but um, you know, she, uh, she wanted to give it to me. So I, I felt really special for that. But no, uh, a lot of these songs are mine and uh, mm -hmm. that I've written with good people like Corley Barker and Aaron Pax Taylor. Uh, those are two of my main writers, and um, I just I just love the way they work with music. So it's very it's a very special EP for me because I try I try to put my best into my work, and that's that's mm -hmm. what these songs are for. But now, have you guys thought of a title of the EP yet? Uh, we're picking out a single for the for okay. The EP. Um, okay. We're either going with one that's called "Chill and Real." Okay. Or that that's a special song. We can we can cover that later. But um, "Chill and Real" or uh, "Homebody," that one I just played for you. Okay, well, I tell you what, it's anything like "Homebody," I know the rest is going to take care of itself. No doubt about it. Too love that. Hey, take me through the process. Um, and I always don't do this because I put the artist name right back into the Clay Airy process of songwriting, and uh, the chance to kind of like I said, just show the emotions, the feelings. Uh, you mentioned about putting everything that you do into your own work. Uh, the process, do you enjoy it kind of by yourself when you come up with it? Or is there times when you're saying, man, I'm getting stuck on some ideas and kind of putting pen to paper and, you know, coming up with lyrics. Um, do you enjoy the co-write process or kind of a little bit of both? Take me through that process a little bit. Uh, I love both, uh, actually, <laughs> because when I get like an idea in my head, it's usually because I write it down. And then like at some time I get a melody like mm -hmm. automatically in my head. And it's, it's just crazy how it comes. It's just it's, it's unreal. It's unrealistic. I don't, like it amazes me how it comes. I guess God's telling me something. I don't know, but um, <clears throat> no, uh, that process is uh, very fun to me when I get to actually interact with other people and write songs because I want to hear their spin on it, but also that they, they know where I'm coming from when I tell them what it's about mm -hmm. and uh, the lines I put in there and the melody even um, melody is key to me. Mm -hmm. uh, melody makes a song, everything I think. The words behind it come with it, but melody is key to me for sure. And to a lot of people, no doubt. Now, how, how exciting is this? I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to be back out there. You just mentioned Key West and a lot of things uh, going on in your camp, you know, possible tour through Texas down here through the Christmas thing. And then uh, all these things just to be back on stage again in front of fans. My God, man, doing what you guys do best. And there was that lull where nothing could really go on through the whole the, the two year hiatus. And that just really ate me to a crawl. I can imagine how you guys felt when I couldn't go out there and do the uh, promotions, but you guys, I mean, that's how you make a living, put food on the table for your family. How exciting is it to be back on stage doing what you love to do? Uh, every chance I get is uh, breathtaking. Uh, people I meet every time I play, there's someone that wants to talk to me and I will love to talk to them. And that's, that's what it is to me. People that enjoy my music and take something from it every time I play. And I get an adrenaline rush when I'm on stage. So, uh, it helps, but, uh, you know, interaction with people and, uh, connecting with people is a big deal to me. So I tell you what, man, couldn't, couldn't ask for better. Like I said, we'll be at a festival next week and 
connect with people. That's what, that's what we do, especially in this line of work. No doubt about it, brother. Again, uh, clayairy.com. Go check out the songs that are out there across the digital platforms now. I can't wait for the EP uh, drop date to come. Of course, we'll have him back on when the EP does drop, and we'll sing a whole uh, new selection of songs here. But I tell you what, time for song two. We're going to go three songs today because I'm feeling so good Ooh. on Friday, too. So uh, what's up next, my friend? Uh, this one's called uh, Margarita at a Time, if you like margaritas. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, it's not necessarily about that, but uh, I wrote this song with um, Aaron Pax Taylor and Corey Lee Barker and Randy mm-hmm. Barnett. But um, this song is more of like you're getting over a woman, but you're happy you're getting over a woman because you got a margarita in your hand and you're somewhere on an island or somewhere on a beach. <laughs> where you're going. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's it's more of an excite, it's like a a, a soothing feeling mm-hmm. uh, that you're getting over. So a margarita at a time. So uh, I, I, that's I love that as a country a country title for a song. It's all yours. <laughs> okay. Sunset sinking in a sea of. I'm doing anything but thinking about you Taking in the silence Soaking up the waves Came here searching for serenity Jose Cuervo therapy if you want to find me you know where I'll be cause if the bartender's worth this salt I won't remember who you are by 915 girl I'll be riding on the clouds Line by line, sip by sip, I'm closer than I've ever been, leaving everything we were behind. I'm getting over you. A margarita at a time. Up bikinis and hula skirts, bronze skin beauty, so hot it hurts. It's a tough situation, but I'm gonna make it work. If the bartender's worth his salt. Won't remember who you are by 915. Girl, I'll be riding on the cloud. Line by line, sip by sip. I'm closer than I've ever been, leaving everything we were behind. I'm getting over you. Margarita at a time. It's a good day. It's a good day. It's a good day. To be a margarita. It's a good day. It's a good day. It's a good day. Margarita. Any day is a good day for a margarita, man. In fact, you know, that's a good idea for tonight. Um, yes, and that's true, authentic country music here on the backstage pass. Clay Airy here, again, presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. Check them out, easyliquor.com. Uh, get that bottle, I know, through uh, other podcasts and of course sponsoring here man that we love what they do tremendous whiskey out of uh, florida 90 handcrafted proof out there too so uh, give them a try easyliquor.com and of course mitchmax.com the official merchandise 
provider of the show. Some cool coffee mugs and men's and ladies apparel there. Go check it out. It's free shipping worldwide. And of course, our friends over at Hank Jr. Productions. Man, you just have a terrific sound. And it's songs like that. Cannot wait till this EP comes out, my friend. And and I already, uh, I get to make decisions around here because I own this thing. So we're already going to have you back on the show well, uh, around that time when it comes back. So <laughs> can't wait to, to see you play live uh, one day, get to a show and do some coverage out there too here on the uh, Backstage Pass. We'll take uh, one final time out for the sponsors here on the show. Of course, coming up next week, uh, great, uh, just a great lineup. Atlanta Springsteen is going to drop by. And of course, our good friend uh, Colby Cooper, he's killing it out there with his new single, Breaking News. Uh, feel free to check that out, too. Drew Cooper going to stop by. Uh, Allison Elena used to be on American Idol. Some exciting things going on in her camp on Monday. So a lot of cool shows coming up next week here on the uh, Backstage Pass. A word from MitchMax.com. And, of course, our good friends at Banktail Whiskey will come back and do rapid fire with Clay. Have uh, a lot of fun there. Get to know him more on a personal basis. And, of course, a, a whole lot more. If you have any comments, drop them in the box. We'll get to them because uh, I'm always up for audience participation. You guys know that. I do talk a lot, but the good thing is we can take comments from the comment box. One final time out. We're coming back with Clay. It is the Backstage Pass. We're live on the Backstage Pass YouTube channel and at the sportsguyspodcast.com. That's a mouthful. Coming right back. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And, of course, coming up on Monday on the show, uh, she was on Idol a few years back. Allison Elena is going to join us. Colby Cooper, Alana Springsteen, Drew Cooper. Be sure to keep it tuned to the Backstage Pass YouTube channel. And, of course, uh, if you missed an interview, always catch it. They're there every day. The SportsGuysPodcast.com, which powers all the country music podcasts and sports podcasts we do put out there. Back here with Clay Airy on the show, presented by your good friends at Bangtail Whiskey, MitchMax.com, and Hank Jr. Productions. Uh, man, i got to get into rapid fire in just a second, but I'm going to throw a little curveball here. Because I love doing this, especially coming back from a break since that was the final time out of the day. Uh, we're going to have you play one more because I'm just in a great mood. It's a well, TGIF I'm version. I'm going to the beach this weekend, and life is good, man. What can I say? Of course. <laughs> I'll play one more, of course. I uh, appreciate that. You got it. What are we going to hear? Okay, this song is a military song. All right. And uh, I haven't released it yet. It won't be going on my EP. I've been uh, shopping around a little bit with it, but... Um, if uh, nobody cuts it, um, I'm going to put it out as a single uh, pretty shortly after my EP. But um, no, it was written with Corley Barker, and it's about um, a, a fallen soldier who uh, came and found his way back home after he he uh, he died. And uh, it's about being on that plane when you when all those soldiers are on the plane and you have to stay seated. And uh, it's uh, just an amazing song. When I first heard the song after it was done, when we wrote it, I was just like. It's a really good song, but um, <clears throat> no, it's called uh, "Somebody Worth Fighting For." So. Mm -hmm. Here we go. The plane touched down, and the pilot said, "Could you take your seat?" We looked out the window at an infantry a Fallen soldier found his way back home Nobody said a word at all Couldn't help but cry It got me thinking Am I somebody worth fighting for? Somebody who gives a damn about the sacrifice of the men who died to give us all a chance. Somebody who appreciates 
Every breath they get to take, somebody who tips their hat, stands for the flag who's grateful to the core, somebody worth fighting for. Wonder what they're saying to his wife and kids. I hope they know how proud we are of what he did. Some gifts can't be repaid, like the priceless one he gave to keep us free. I just pray that I can be somebody worth fighting for, somebody who gives a damn about the sacrifice of the men who died to give us all a chance, somebody who appreciates every breath they get to take, somebody who tips their hat, Stands for the flag who's grateful to the core, somebody worth fighting for. May we never take for granted one single day. May we always choose to be somebody worth fighting for, somebody who gives a damn about the sacrifice of the men who died to give us all a chance, somebody who appreciates every breath they get to take. Somebody who tips their hat, stands for the flag, who's grateful to the core, somebody worth fighting for. Somebody worth fighting for. If you guys can see me right now too, it's like, man, just goosebumps right up the arm and down the spine. And it's just, that's, <laughs> uh, there's a reason we met in Nashville and our paths cross there at, at, at bar lines, no doubt. I just got out of the media room and I'm coming down and I get uh, clay area. I was like, Oh yeah, I could listen to this music. I said, man, brother, it's a reason I always believe people come into your life for a certain reason. And, and you cross, cross paths with good people, man. You're right up there with the, uh, Top up and coming country artists that I see for the future impacting the industry the next five, 10, 15 years, brother. However long you want to take this ride, it's it's totally on you. You have some tremendous talent. And I'm not just saying that either. It is uh impeccable, amazingly that good. Appreciate so, that. I always Appreciate tell people, man, check it out, clayary.com, and of course, all the socials out there. Yeah, I'm gonna get to this one here because I love it. People tuning in on YouTube as we grow that channel, because I love YouTube, it's a great channel. Uh, and I think you touched on this at the beginning, but uh, you know, one of your fans says, Look at that. Yeah, and you talked about colorblind and how how special. Key West was. I mean, when that blew up, 20,000, and of course, still counting now, too. I mean, you just, you had to be thrilled. I know you touched on it at the top, too. But again, that's, that's just building on something that's fantastic. And it's, it's a credit to your work ethic. Yeah. Um, Colorblind uh, was written by Tony Stampley as well. Um, that song, uh, I listened to that for about a year. I listened <clears> to that song for about a year. And uh, I finally told my uh, best friend, Randy, that uh, I got to cut this song. Because mm -hmm. every time I heard it, it has a meaning to me, you know, just uh, basically about treating each other with respect. And no matter who you are inside or out, uh, you just you just need to give people respect no matter who they are, or what they are. So, Well, of course, I misquoted this. So I'll always stand to correct it here on the, the, the podcast, too, which is great. Um, there's where we're at right now. So <laughs> I yeah. said in counting. That's what I've been in counting. And I was off by quite a bit there from over 20 to almost 80. So it's it's uh Hey man, uh, credit to the work and, and brother, it's it's in the talent, it's in the voice, it's in the the instrumentation, it's it's all there, man. You got the total package and that, that you need to succeed in this business. And I will say this: it's songs like that that really speak to people, especially um, like I said, the three you've you've performed today, no doubt. All right, let's do a little rapid fire because I love doing this. We get to know you more on a personal basis. Cool thing is, there's no right or wrong answers. Let's do this. Uh, the Clay Airy go-to food that you like to cook or you like to get takeout. What's kind of the 
the food of choice? Uh, cooking wise, I would probably say chicken. Anything chicken, uh, it's it's me. Uh, takeout <laughs> uh, to go. Uh, it's got to be Mexican food. All right, so you say Mexican. Because when I'm when I'm uh, eating Mexican <laughs> food, I got to have a nice cold beer with it. Yeah. <laughs> Or go back to the margarita song. Get you a margarita. Get you play that too. Yeah. I like I like frozen margaritas. I don't like it on the rocks. Yeah. yeah, see, I'm with you. The only way I can drink that is frozen. I cannot drink it on the rocks. It's a weird. Now there is one that I buy or store down here, HEB, which is a big grocery chain down here, and they've got um, the instant ready margarita things, which you just pour right out of the bottle, which is really you know it's it's not. Now put it this way: the alcohol concentration is a little bit higher, but. Yeah, <laughs> but it gets you a buzz. I can't remember the name of it, but it's um, it, that, that I can do that maybe a little bit of ice. But if I'm out Mexican food or some type of environment where the, the, we're just having a gathering, I, I can't do it on the rocks. I've got to do the the margarita, like you said, the frozen type. So I'm, right. I'm I'm with you on that too. And like I said, a little bit of salt on the outside of it, and lime, squeeze, stir, ready to drink. That's just. I'll go. take those. And beach, <laughs> so and the beach to go with it. Yeah, the beach to go with. It. <laughs> no shoes, no shirt, no problem. Right. That's right. our beach song too. I love exactly. that. Exactly. All right. Uh, you know, the a few weeks back, the the Powerball was high. I tried to play. Unfortunately, I didn't win. But uh, I know what I would do with the money. No doubt about it. When it was in the four hundreds. Uh, of course, even these days, it doesn't have to be in the four hundreds. A good ninety nine, a good twenty five would do it. If Clay Airy won a Powerball or a Mega Millions tomorrow, what's the first thing you do with the money? Uh, the first thing I would do with money is um, I'm I'm a very generous person. Uh, I like to give back. Mm -hmm. But uh, my closest friends and my my family, um, the people who have supported me all my life, I would uh, give back in, in some way or some shape or form, if possible, um, because I, I think they deserve it. Uh, mm -hmm. Raising me as a kid and uh, raising me as a, a, a good person and uh, just the people that I surround myself with are I try to I try to be with people who are successful and good people and and a lot of them are very generous and I would uh, give it back to them on heartbeat so I would help them any way uh, shape or form first and then after that I would uh, find a way or do a donation to somewhere mm -hmm. and then uh, whatever else um, I'd try to pay my bills a little bit because I'm broke but. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm right there with you. I'd be the first thing. And now, now this is funny too. Some people, somebody would say, I'd buy a car, I'd do this because I've had the same car since the 80s or 90s or whatever. I got, you know, this this car is five years old. It's new to me. It's not a new car, but it's, you know, used or whatever, but it's new to me. Um, you know, I love this because this kind of goes in the money situation too. So have, have you ever stepped on a lot or a dealership and you're like, man, I'm going to go test drive a car, even though I know I can't afford it, but I like to test drive it just because it's there. And then you actually, I know what happened to me. I did it with a Hummer one time. <laughs> I couldn't afford it. I just had to take it for a spin. Uh, and then you ended up settling on what you could afford. Was there kind of a, a a car out there that was a dream car for you? Either you test drove or a friend let you drive or just kind of a thing that I know for a lot of people, it's it's different scenarios. What what was yours when it came to a dream car? What would the purchase be? Um, typically, uh, my dream car is not newer cars. But um, I used to work. I used to be a mechanic. I used to be a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. but I can do a lot of things with my talents. But I used to be a mechanic, so I was used to driving new cars and cars that just came off the lot and everything. But um, no, my uh, dream car, I think, would be a 71 Chevelle. Uh, it's, <laughs> you can't beat that, brother. That's a nice one to have, too. For me, I'm going to stick. I, I got to go the, the Hummer route, even though it's a gas guzzler. And I have a truck, too, a gas guzzler, too, at the same time. But uh, I, I probably would, if I could afford it and won the Powerball or Mega Millions, I probably would stick with that and just say, here, here's 60000 you know, piss it away. There's a Hummer and there it goes. That's a part, that's a part of it too. And throw it right down the drain too. All right, back to food here. Uh, pizza. How does Clay Airy like his pizza? What toppings go on it? Um, I'm very, I'm very picky with my pizza, but I love any, I can like love all the meats. I'm not a really big vegetable person unless it's like peppers. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes onions, I'll eat it, but, um, probably Buffalo chicken or barbecue oh, chicken pizza. That's, that's, uh, you know, I, I've got the, that's the next one I'm going to get into beside the meats. And of course I say more veggies. I'll never get into veggies, but that Hawaiian kind of pizza with the pineapple and Canadian bacon or the barbecue or Buffalo. I'm going to get one of those specialty ones now that wherever it comes from, it's got to be Buffalo chicken, all pineapple, three those Canadian bacon, or some type of barbecue pizza. Yeah. And all three of those are fantastic. Don't, <laughs> no knock, doubt. don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> that's what they say. No doubt. All yeah. right. Is, is clay a coffee drinker? If so, what goes in the coffee? 
am I a coffee drinker? Uh, very rarely I'll drink coffee. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe every once in a while when I'm going to the studio, but uh, it's got to have uh, a little bit of sugar and creamer, but not too much anymore. I'm, I'm able to drink it black. I used to dump that sucker right in and <laughs> empty out the sugar can and <laughs> everything. But <laughs> yeah, just do what I do now. It pours and you're like, oh, it's too much. Okay. <laughs> Slap the top back on and stir it, and I'm ready for, like I said, sugar I don't need and cholesterol and everything else that goes up, too, with it. Like I said, always fun. Uh, let's, I guess let's let's do this one to kind of finish it up. Favorite movie or movies, I guess, plural. Uh, cartoon, cartoons growing up, what, what, what was it? Uh, both or just a cartoon? Yeah, or or both. Movie? Yeah, let's do both. Oh, boy. You know, I don't remember a lot of those uh, <laughs> because sometimes I was – uh, forced by my grandma to watch a lot of stuff. But um, <laughs> let's see, as growing up as a kid, my favorite cartoon would have to be probably uh, Beauty and the Beast. Okay. I like right. Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would say my favorite movie, uh, I love uh, I Am Legend. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, you can't beat that. Got to love those two right there too. At the same time, all right. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do one more because I love this one. This may take some thought here. Uh, do you remember the title of the first song you ever wrote? Or if you can't remember the title, what was the song about? Uh, the song was a love song. The first okay. song I ever wrote was called. It's it's called Insane, but it, it was called Insane, but now it's called Fallen Insane mm-hmm. because it was it was previously about an ex, and I had to re I had to rewrite it. <laughs> and um, it, the that song is. Well, you'll see it in the future too, because that's, that's a good song. So falling insane. You, you got a lot of, <laughs> you passed a rapid fire with flying colors. You got a lot of good songs that we can't wait to hear on this uh, upcoming EP, June or July. Hopefully this summer we'll get a hold of it, brother. And looking forward to uh, having you back on guys, make sure you check it out. Clayary.com, A-E-R-Y.com. And of course, uh, give him a like across all these socials out there and, uh, Definitely, my friend. Hey, continued success going forward. I'm so glad our paths crossed in Nashville at Bar Lines and we got to meet and definitely a uh, chance to hear just a great side of country music. You're doing it right. Uh, you're doing you and just, hey, continued success going forward. We appreciate you being with us here on the show and hope you come back, no doubt. Oh, I'm coming back, but I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> no it. Doubt. Thank you for so, having me. You got it, brother. The one and only Clay Airy. We got to meet at CRS 2022. Thanks to Bangtail Whiskey, our friends over at Mitch Max, and, of course, Hank Jr. Productions. We're back Monday with Allison Elena on the show and Colby Cooper next week. Until then, you guys have a great weekend. Go to the beach. Have fun. Uh, drink you some Michelob Ultra. Get you a margarita, Mexican food, and have a good weekend. And, uh, get me one, too. I will drink for you, no doubt. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys Monday, uh, 4.30. Alice and Elena on the show here on the Backstage Pass YouTube channel. Go subscribe. And, of course, check out the sportsguyspodcast.com uh, while you're at it for archived of interviews that you may have missed. Until the next